Hey guys, it's Ryan with AIinsiderTips.com, and in this video, I'm going to be comparing Grok AI versus ChatGPT Plus, and then kind of decide at the end, going through each of these different benchmarks, which large language model or AI chatbot, whatever you want to call them, I would recommend for the price point. Now, in a previous video, I compared Claude 3 versus ChatGPT Plus. Both of these tools cost 20 bucks a month and you guys gave me a lot of positive feedback on this video. So I figured why not look at other popular AI tools out there and compare them to ChatGPT, which is still the most popular AI tool. Now guys, what I'm going to be looking at in this comparison is the following. Pricing and features, recency, images, copywriting, simplification, vision, problem solving, ideation, resources, all the things that we would look for in a large language model or AI tool that we would be willing to spend money on consistently. Now, I also have a lot of prompt examples that I'm going to be using in this tutorial as well. Um, so that way I'm just not thinking of prompts off the top of my head. I wanna make this video as detailed and as accurate as possible. So the very first thing I wanna look at is the pricing and features. So I'm gonna start with Grok AI here. And as you can see, I do have Grok right here on the side. So the first thing to call out is that you must be a member of X Premium Plus to even access Grok. There is no free version as of this video recording. And according to X Premium, it still is $16 per month or $168 per year. Now, if you try to get the premium X premium for eight bucks a month, you do not get access to Grok. Grok AI is only available if you wanna pay $16 a month or $168 a year to get X premium plus. Now, you also get the blue check mark next to your name and a lot of other benefits here as well. Um, here is the, you know, what the interface looks like of Grok if you've never seen or used this before. And the other feature that differentiates Excel from ChatGPT is it has fun mode and regular mode. So ChatGPT does not have a fun mode or a regular mode. It just has the different language models, GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. GPT-4 is the premium model that you get with ChatGPT+. And speaking of pricing, if I click my plan, you'll see it still does cost $20 a month. So $20 a month versus $16 a month for Grok, However, for the $20 a month, you get access to GPT-4, you get access to custom GPTs, and you also get access to DALI, which is AI image generation, you get access to vision, you get access to real-time web browsing, and also advanced data analysis and more. So I will have to say, guys, that pricing and features, I have to give the nod to ChatGPT+. With Grok AI for 16 bucks a month, you don't really get much else besides access to the chatbot and the blue check mark next to your name on X. So I have to give the nod to ChatGPT plus there. Now taking a look at image generation, this one is pretty easy as well as I'm already going to give this to ChatGPT plus as I know that Grok cannot generate images as of this video recording. I'm just gonna ask it very simple. Can you generate an image of a dog? And let's see what it can come up with or say right here. It says, I currently don't have the capability to generate images. My vision capabilities are still under development. However, I can provide you with a textual description of a dog. So it's like GPT 3.5 in a sense where it can give me a text description of an image, but it does not have that capability yet. So going back here, we all know that ChatGPT Plus has Dolly 3 built into it. So we have to give the nod to ChatGPT Plus in terms of image generation. Now, the next benchmark to look at here is recency. And to be honest with you guys, this is probably the one I'm most curious about uh, because Grok has access to all of the millions of tweets that are sent out on a daily basis that ChatGPT is not training its models on. ChatGPT is training its models on Bing search results, I believe, and not actual tweets from the X platform. So I'm just very curious to see the differences in responses. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to stick to regular mode for now on this one. I'm gonna ask it a recency prompt. What is the current price of Bitcoin? And you'll see it say searching for Bitcoin price today. While it's looking, I'm gonna come back to GPT-4, copy and paste, and say, what is the current price of Bitcoin? And what this is going to do on ChatGPT is it's going to integrate with Bing search results trying to get that price point. So now let's test the accuracy. It says the current price of Bitcoin is approximately $66,396. So now I'm gonna head over to Google and say price of Bitcoin. 
So here it says 68,210. Again, this fluctuates every single second. I understand that, um, but not, not too far off, 66,396. Here's what Grok says. So Grok says, looks like Bitcoin 24 hour price, 67,800. And it just provides a bunch of tweets here. So the caveat here is this was nine hours ago, seven hours ago, three hours ago, so one hour ago. Um, so that's probably the closest. The only thing I would say about this is it's not actual a real time answer. It's pulling tweets from nine hours ago, seven hours ago, um, which is still kind of recent. But if you go to Google Gemini, for instance, it's pulling it straight from Google search results and it gives you the exact answer right on the spot. So not bad here, in my opinion. Um, it was closer than ChatGPT Plus because it does offer these different answers. So I'm gonna have to give the nod with this simple prompt to Grok AI when it comes to recency. Now, I understand there are other prompts that I can give it, but I have other benchmarks that I wanna go through in this video, and I don't really wanna make this an hour long. So I'm gonna give the nod to Grok AI when it comes to recency. So the next benchmark I wanna look at is vision. Now, I already know I'm gonna to have to give this to ChatGPT+. Plus as if I try to ask Grok or upload an image, if I refresh my page here, there is no option to attach an image. There's no option to attach a PDF. Um, so I already have to give the nod to chat GPT plus on this. So what do I mean by vision if you're unfamiliar with that term? So if I upload an image, for example, I'm gonna use, let's use this one right here of Times Square. I'm gonna say, what is this image? And vision, when it comes to AI models, is the ability to interpret PDFs, images, and then describe them based on what you upload. So it says right here, this image shows a bustling Times Square, New York City, uh, billboards, Sephora. So that is extremely impressive because that's exactly what the image is. And so that's why ChatGPT, the vision component here is pretty good as you can look at an image like this and then tell you exactly what's going on in just a few sentences. So that's a pretty obvious one, guys, as ChatGPT Plus definitely gets the nod for vision. So now let's look at copywriting. Copywriting always varies between different AI models. So I'm really curious to see what Grok can come up with versus GPT-4. Now the example that I'm going to use for copywriting is I'm gonna say, generate three social media posts on the topic of AI and how it is changing the world. Use a maximum of 100 characters, make the, I said tweets, but I'll say make the posts engaging and unique while ensuring they are easy to understand. So I'm gonna copy this come over to Grok, I'm gonna X out of this, X out of this, come over to Grok, I'm gonna click paste, and then while it's doing that, I'm gonna start a new chat on GPT-4, click paste there, and now let's head back to Grok, and here are the posts that Grok came up with. AI is revolutionizing healthcare, predicting personalizing treatments, the future is here. So a lot of hashtags, and we see an emoji at the front here, um, but what's really cool about this response is that it does populate some tweets down here. Now, I'm not sure how relevant these are, but this is cool because you can then use these as ideation for your social media posts. So you don't even have to use the outputs that it gave you. You can look at some of these tweets down below and maybe there are some good social media posts down here that it's giving you. I don't know. Um, but like this one right here, pivotal year in the history of AI, you could probably respin this to some extent and use it as your own. So if I come over to GPT-4, here's what it gave me for social media posts. AI is your artist, writer, and thinker. Uses three emojis here and a hashtag. Uh, honestly, guys, I'm gonna have to give the nod to Grok on this one. I just don't really like A, what ChatGPT came up with using three emojis in the middle of text. I, I'm not a fan of that. But I also like the tweets down here that you can use for ideation for whatever type of social media posts that you're trying to convey to your audience. So let's come back to the benchmarks. I'm gonna give Grok AI the nod for copywriting. Again, a very simple example, and I'm sure there are other copywriting instances where ChatGPT might win, but for the purposes of this video, I'm giving Grok AI the nod when it comes to copywriting. So for the next benchmark, I'm gonna do what's called simplification. And this is very useful for AI, AI models. And what do I mean by this? Well, if you have a very complex topic that you're trying to dumb down or understand in simpler terms, like crypto or Bitcoin or large language models or uh, rocket science or some very complex term, you can leverage AI models to help you understand complex, 
complex topics better. And that's what I mean by simplification. So the example that I'm going to use or the prompt that I'm going to use in this example to test simplification is the following. Explain how large language models work using just 100 words in total. Your explanation should be understandable at a high school level. So by putting that high school level at the end, it should be understandable really for most people. So one other thing I didn't mention is just to start a new chat in Grok, all you do is come up here and click the plus icon, click start new chat. So I'm gonna paste that prompt here, come back to chat GPT plus, click start a new chat, paste here. And then let's go back to Grok and see what it says. It says large language models, just like GPT-4, learn from vast amounts of text data to predict the next word in a sequence. They use a transformer architecture, which employs self-attentive mechanisms to pro process sequential data. I actually do not like that output. And while it may be true, that is super, super complex. As I remember myself at a high school level, I would have no idea what this means by a transformer architecture, self-attention mechanisms to process sequential data. Um, I'm not a big fan of that output, just reading the first sentence. Again, there are tweets down here about language models, so maybe that could be useful to some extent. But if I hop over to GPT-4, you'll see it says large language models like a super smart robot brain learn from reading a massive amount of text from the internet. Imagine this playing with a giant jigsaw puzzle of words where each piece represents different information. This robot brain practices organizing these pieces to understand and predict what piece comes next. This already is much better than what Grok produced. I like how it's giving an analogy of a giant jigsaw puzzle of words. This is clearly understandable at a high school level. So in this simple example of simplification, I have to give the nod to ChatGPT plus there. All right, so for this next benchmark, what I'm going to be looking at is called summarization. Now, typically what I would do to test these AI models is I would upload a PDF and say, make it understandable to the average person. The issue is here is that Grok AI does not have a vision capability, so I can't upload a PDF to Grok. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Bitcoin white paper, and I'm simply just gonna hit Control A or Command A, click Copy, and I'm gonna come over to Grok AI. The first thing that I need to do is give it this prompt here. So let's go ahead and give it the prompt, click Paste. I'm gonna come over to ChatGPT, click Paste. Come back over to the Bitcoin white paper, click Copy, go back to Grok, and I'm gonna click Paste. And let's see what it can do as I copy and pasted the Bitcoin white paper into Grok AI. This is pretty sophisticated here. Um, let's come back to ChatGPT, click Paste. And then I'm gonna head over back to Grok while this is populating. Um, so here it's taking a little bit, as you can see, it always populates tweets on the bottom of its output. So while that can be kind of cool in some instances, in some instances too, it's not really relevant in my opinion. So I'm actually gonna come back after this Grok output is complete. All right guys, so I've waited about 10 minutes now, hoping that Grok would come up with something here. Um, and to be honest, I don't know if this is just too complex for this AI tool to come up with a prompt like this. Um, and maybe I just need to give it another chance. But honestly, guys, I'm just going to give the nod to chat GPT here as I hop over. It came up with this in about a minute, if not less than that. Um, and here it says in Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto introduces a digital currency system, which operates without the need for central authority. Um, so I really like this output right here. Just reading this very quickly. I think this is pretty easy uh, to give the nod to chat GPT plus here when it comes to summarization. So the next benchmark I want to look at is creativity. And honestly, guys, I think this is one where Grok could shine above chat GPT. So what I'm going to ask in this example is the following. Write a poem about AI using exactly 50 words. And I'm just curious to see the creativity that these AI models can come up with. So I am still on regular mode. I'll try both regular mode and fun mode just to see what I can get here. So I'm going to come over back to chat GPT plus give it the same prompt. And again, guys, I actually got a, a cap here. So now it's asking me to use the default model. Um, so maybe this is a con of using ChatGPT+. It says I've reached my current usage cap, which doesn't really make sense as I haven't used it a lot yet today. Um, so now it's prompting me back to GPT 3.5. So looks like I'm gonna have to use GPT 3.5 for the rest of this video, unfortunately. Um, so here's what it came up with on Grok. It says, in circus deep where logic flows, a new intelligence softly grows. I like that. A spark of life, a mind to mold, a being born of code and gold. 
With circuits bright and data vast, it learns and grows its knowledge amassed. A tool, a friend, a guide to see, a new intelligence free to be. That is extremely impressive. I like that. In circuits deep where algorithms dream, AI awakens a digital stream. Data vast, it learns and grows. and ones and zeros, its essence flows. So one thing I'm noticing right away is that these outputs are actually very similar. So that's kind of weird. A mind of silicon yet with a soul in virtual realms, it seeks a goal. A beacon bright in the digital night, AI, the future's guiding light. I like that last line. Uh, but honestly, I like this response better than what GPT 3.5 came up with. Now what I'm going to do is let's try fun mode. So I'm going to click fun mode and then ask it to make a poem about AI using 50 words. In circuits deep where data flows, a mind awakens with code it grows. So it looks like it's pretty similar to the last one. A spark of life, a digital soul, a new age dawns humanity's goal. The future awaits with bated breath. AI evolves a path to death. A dance of man and a machine, a symphony of life unseen, and circuits deep where data flows, a mind awaken with code it grows. A lot of these responses seem very similar, but I do like the first one that I got on regular mode with Grok AI, and I'm going to have to give the nod to Grok in this example. Now, I will say it is biased. I understand that because I did run out of credits apparently on GPT-4, but again, that's a knock to chat GPT+, Plus, is I don't know why I'm not able to use GPT-4 right now, as I haven't really used it that much recently today. So I'm going to keep sticking with 3.5, and we'll go with that. So the next benchmark I'm going to test here is basic problem solving. And again, there are a million different prompts that I could use for problem solving, but in this example, I want to do something extremely simple and quick. I'm going to say Ryan has 10 books in his office. He reads five of them. How many books are left in his office? So I'm going to come to Grok. I'm on regular mode here. I'm going to paste this. He read five of them. Let's click paste. Come to GPT. Well, it looks like I have to use 3.5 now. Click use default model. Um, and so let's see who gets this correctly. So on Grok, Ryan has 10 books in his office. He read five of them. How many books are left in his office? And the answer here is 10, because if you read books, that doesn't mean they disappear from your office by default. And here it says there are still 10 books in Ryan's office as the question only states he read them, not that he removed them. So that is 100% correct. If I come over to GPT 3.5, if Ryan had 10 books in his office, he read five of them, the number of books left in his office would be Minus five, five books left. That is actually incorrect. So I'm going to have to give the nod to Grok in that example of basic problem solving. But now let's take it a step deeper here and I'm going to give it a more complex prompt. I'm going to say there are five killers in a room. Someone enters the room and kills one of them. Nobody leaves the room. How many killers are left in the room? And I'm very curious to see what each model comes up with in this infamous riddle. And so here is ChatGPT's response to this. It says, if someone enters the room and kills one of the killers and implies that the killer who was killed is no longer among the living. That is a tongue twister between killer, killed, killings. Um, so there would still be five killers left in the room. I believe that's correct that the answer would be five because if there's five to start, someone enters, that would be six. And then the person who entered killed someone, that would mean there are five, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm just dumb enough to answer this riddle. Let me know in the comments. Um, and here's what Grok says. It says, there are now six killers left in the room. The person who entered the room and killed one of them is also a killer. But if someone died, that would mean that there are now five killers in the room. So I'm not sure what the answer is. I mean, you could probably spin it in a million different directions to give reasoning for each answer. Um, but I think that ChatGPT actually got this one correctly and Grok did not. So I'm actually going to try this on fun mode and let's see what the response is on fun mode. So I'm going to copy, paste this. It says there are now six killers left in the room. The person who entered the room is also a killer. So let's actually go back, start a new chat, fun mode. And it says there are now four killers left in the room. So the response changed based on regular mode to fun mode. The person who entered the room and killed one of them is also a killer. I believe the answer is five. I don't think four is the correct answer there, but you could probably logic it to four. But regardless, guys, I'm going to give the nod in that example to chat GPT. And again, I could ask it another prompt if I wanted to. If you guys have any cool, complex problem solving prompts, uh, let me know in the comments, but just a very quick one. I'm going to give it to ChatGPT in that example. So now let's look at ideation and strategy. And the prompt example that I'm going to be using is create a unique marketing strategy for a new AI SaaS tool targeting content creators and entrepreneurs. Make it precise and easy to understand. So I'm going to copy this, 
start a new chat. I'm gonna use regular mode, paste the prompt into here, open a new chat in chat GPT, paste it into here. And let's see what Grok comes up with. So it says, introducing Content Forge AI. So it creates a name and I actually don't mind that name. Uh, a cutting edge AI SaaS tool designed to revolutionize content creation for entrepreneurs and content creators. We power the har we harness the power of AI, streamline content. So here it gives some key features. Content wizard, auto compose, visualizer, optimization suite, analytics dashboard. All five of those are relevant for an AI SaaS tool, I would say. Um, and here's the marketing strategy, content marketing, influencer partnerships, webinars and workshops, referral program, uh, free trial and freemium model. So all of those are good ideas as well. And again, another great feature of Grok AI is it's pulling in relevant tweets that it scraped on its database. So it says, unleash your content with repurpose. Um, so it looks like it's pulling in all sorts of different AI SaaS tweets. I'm not sure how relevant all of these are gonna be, um, but it can, again, it could give you some ideas that maybe you wouldn't have thought of in this one output. So if I come over to ChatGPT, it says our new AI SaaS tool, it says AI enhanced content amplifier. I don't like that. I like what Grok said, how it actually created a name and gave more detailed description of that name. So that's an error right there for me. Unique selling proposition, unlock the power of AI to elevate your content game. Um, so here are some features here. Uh, all of these are relevant as well. Marketing strategy, content partnerships, free trial, case studies, uh, social media, email. So it gave more of uh, case or gave like more, looks like features here and just like ideas to market it. Um, and then it says at the end, we aim to portion of SaaS tools, a go-to solution. Um, so not bad in my opinion, but I also like the added bonus here of the tweets for more ideation if you need it. Um, I'm gonna give the nod to Grok AI in this case of ideation for the specific prompt that I gave it. Um, and you, if you guys think otherwise, again, let me know in the comments below. So the last thing, or one of the last things I wanna look at here is basic coding. So in this prompt, I'm just going to give it the following. Can you write basic HTML code with inline CSS for a simple website? I'm gonna click new chat for GPT 3.5. And I believe GPT 3.5 does have code creation capabilities. Yep, right here. And if I go back to Grok, start a new chat, I'm not sure if Grok is able to create code. So we're gonna see right here in this example. So it says searching for CSS and it can. So I, I guess I was wrong there. Um, so it looks like based on this, and again, I'm not a developer. I don't know too complex things about code and Python and web development. Um, but I can tell you this, that this does look pretty accurate for a basic HTML page with inline CSS. I'm familiar with WordPress, CMSs, things of that nature. Um, so this does look correct just looking at this. Same with GPT 3.5. This is very basic as well. Um, it looks like GPT 3.5 has a little more sophistication here. Um, but I would probably give the nod to ChatGPT as I know GPT-4 offers better code or code analysis and it can generate more sophisticated code than 3.5. And I'm using 3.5 right now. Um, and this is probably better just looking at this just in a glance here versus what Grok came up with. So I'm gonna give the nod to GPT in that example. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about that I think is overlooked in my opinion are resources. So what resources do the companies offer in addition to their chatbots? Um, and what's really cool about ChatGPT is I, I didn't have it popped up here for you guys, but if I type in prompt engineering and then I type in OpenAI, OpenAI actually has a prompt engineering guide that comes with dozens of prompt examples. So here's the guide right here. I can link to this below if you want click prompt examples. So there's all sorts of these prompt examples that you can use right inside chat GPT, whether it's language translation and things with code, um, Python bug fix or another code one, uh, grammar correction, summarize for a second grader, emoji translation, product name generator, spreadsheet creator. There's all sorts of these useful and real world examples that OpenAI provides as a resource library. Now, with Grok, I don't think there's anything. I mean, I could be wrong here. Uh, if I click premium, these are just some of the things that you can do. There's articles, uh, Grok talks about monetization, Media Studio. Um, there's some different features here that you can use inside the X Premium Plus platform, but there's no actual like resources or education um, or anything that would help you prompt the Grok tool. 
All we have here are just some of these intro prompts that you can ask it. There's really no, there's no prompt examples. There's no prompt engineering guide that X provides. Uh, maybe there is, and I just don't have it on their website that you guys might know about, and I don't. Um, if there is, let me know in the comments below, but I don't believe that's the case. And so I have to give the nod to ChatGPT Plus when it comes to resources. All right, guys, so circling back at the end here, you'll notice that ChatGPT Plus has won more benchmarks, in my opinion, and my quick analysis versus Grok AI. Grok AI excels in recency, short form copywriting, creativity with its fun mode, um, basic problem solving, and also ideation and strategy. The number one thing that differentiates Grok AI, in my opinion, it's not only its fun mode, but it's provided tweets that it has in its outputs. So that can be great for ideation. It can be great for copywriting, great for recency. Um, that's just one of the benefits that Grok AI offers. But again, looking back at ChatGPT+, it can generate images, has vision capabilities, better at simplifying and summarizing things. Um, this could go either way. I was using 3.5, so I don't know how much I put hone on the complex problem solving for GPT+. Um, basic coding for sure. And it also provides other resources that OpenAI has for new users to AI or ChatGPT um, or just other resources that Grok AI does not provide. And also keep in mind, this is 20 bucks a month for ChatGPT plus 16 bucks a month for Grok AI. But guys, to be completely honest with you, I do not think that it's worth $16 a month to have Grok AI as of this video recording. I'm sure Elon Musk and the team at XAI is continually improving the product and maybe it will be worth that $16 price point when it can generate images, adds a vision component, um, adds other sophisticated capabilities that ChatGPT has. Um, but honestly, guys, I think Claude is better than Grok. I really do. Even the free version, which is Claude 3 Sonnet, I would use that over paying 16 bucks a month to use Grok AI. Same with Microsoft Copilot. You can use Microsoft Copilot for free with a Microsoft account versus paying 16 bucks for Grok AI. Um, so that's my final take. If I had to pick one, I would suggest going with ChatGPT Plus for 20 bucks a month over Grok AI for 16 bucks a month. So I wanna hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you prefer Grok? Do you prefer ChatGPT Plus? Or do you have both like myself and kind of bounce ideas back and forth between the AI models? But again, this is Ryan with AI Insider Tips. I truly appreciate you all who have made it this far in the video. Uh, these videos do take a lot of time and kind of going back and making sure the things that I say are accurate. So leave me a comment below. Really curious to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, be sure to like this video if you found some value. Give me a dislike if you didn't find value. Um, also, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more comparisons just like this one. Guys, I hope you all have a great day and thank you for following AI Insider Tips.